Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Two Stewards Show. My name's Mark, and I'm here with Brent, and um, we are going to start a <laughs> mini series uh, doing some book reviews. We love the word mini series. <laughs> I prefer to pronounce it miniseries, but it, in any <laughs> <Miseries>. case, <laughs> we will. <laughs> sounds more. Uh, I don't know. Our sounds listeners fancier. will have to endure some miseries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and we're going to start off with "Rich Dad, Poor Dad," kind of a seminal uh, real estate book. But we got a little bit distracted, as often happens. We're just uh, talking about debt and. U.S. debt and Canadian debt, and then um, <laughs> uh, pulled up the U.S. debt clock. So usdebtclock.org. We're gonna do a quick um, a quick episode just on uh, government debt and uh, related things. So uh, yeah, yeah, we thought this was so appalling that we had to share it. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I, uh, usdebtclock.org. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So if you're just listening, we're just going to read off some of these numbers. If you're, um, if you're watching, then we've got, uh, some stuff to share on the screen for you. So I'm just pulling up the U S debt clock, right? And it's, uh, this big page with lots and lots of numbers and they're moving very rapidly. So you got the U S national debt in the top left, which is at uh, $32 trillion. <sighs> Um, <laughs> well, okay, Mark, the way this came out is we pulled out this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and this book was written in 1997. Right. Yes. And it, this issue that I have in my hand now was, uh, what is it, republished in 2017? Like yep. a new version came out, and there's some comments in here uh, because it was the 20th anniversary uh, when they first published the book. Right. So they wanted to give you an, an idea of what, what it was like 20 years ago. And one of the comments was that the debt, the U.S. debt in 2017, was uh, 20 trillion. It's approaching 20 trillion or just at 20 trillion. Yeah. And we decided to look up what it is today. And <laughs> <laughs> well, look up when he originally published it in yeah. 2017. Well, I, I've no, got it up 1997. here. 1997. Yeah, sorry, 97. Yeah. So I've got it here just handy. On this day in 2000, the U.S. debt was at $5.6 trillion. And uh, federal budget deficit of $216 billion. Oh, I got the wrong thing up. Sorry, there we go. Um, that's what it was in 2000. And then you said 2017, what did he say? Yeah. So 2017, they said it was 20 trillion. So went from 5.6 to 20 trillion Yeah. in, uh, in 20 in 20 years. So 1997, when he first published yep. the book it was 5.4 Yep. and now it's 20 or no, in, or in 2017 it was 20. So that right. went up, uh, four times. Yep. In 20 years. In 20 years. Yeah. So every, <laughs> every five years it uh, doubled. That's crazy. But so, the crazier part is what is the debt now? <laughs> since, what is it? Since 20, since 2020? Uh, yeah. Since 2017. Up, since 2017. Yeah. Well, you can pull up 2020 just because the uh, debt clock doesn't do the individual years, but um, 2020 was at 26.5 trillion and now we're at 2023, right? Three years later, um, 32 trillion. So that's another $6 trillion. Okay. So 1997, when he wrote the book, it was 5.4. Yep. Yep. 20 years after he wrote the book, it was 20. So yep. it went up four, four times. And then six years later now, it's 32. Yeah. So it hasn't doubled in five years. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you've ever heard like somebody do a comparison of a million versus a billion versus a trillion, right? Yeah. And I, I can't remember the guy was like, you know, if I made... Just to visualize what that looks like, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And like the, it's, it's ridiculous to go from a million to a billion is like, okay, yeah, that's, that'll take some time. And, uh, but to go from a billion to a trillion is like, it's staggering. Yeah. I, I should have had an example, but it's yeah. just like, it's you can't thousand. even visualize I think, yeah. how much uh, bigger a trillion is than a billion. And that's why when people look at some of these 
like the debt clock or the, these yeah. amounts are like, okay, yeah, I went from, you know, billions to the trillion, like whatever. It's just like <sighs> numbers, right? It's very, it's so hard for us to, to understand that, to visualize it. I think we talked about this a uh, previous episode, just visualizing some of these numbers. Yeah, the sheep on the hillside. You can visualize one, ten, a yeah. hundred, uh, a thousand, you know, maybe ten thousand is getting like, I, I in your head, I can't even probably picture a hundred, right? Like well, if you, I were to look out and say, okay, there's a hundred. You can, yeah, I think you could figure out a hundred, right? When, yeah, when there's protests, ten by ten. Yeah. For example, and the police give like crowd estimates. Yeah. Like they're just you going have no one idea. To three, four, five times well, five. they're yeah. Are they counting? No. But you know, there's some people with expertise in this. But yeah, really, you have no idea. Was it a thousand people or was it three thousand? Yeah. Is you don't have a good way of being able yeah. to tell that, right? Yeah. Or was it ten thousand? Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So then going from you know into the billions and trillions, yeah, hundred thousand. Like, you can't even visualize that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we just had but, to share this <laughs> yeah so what like what one thing that i um that really caught my eye as well and i'll, I'll just pull this up quickly so st louis fed if you're listening and you're interested in this kind of stuff because you're a nerd like us um the st louis fed is uh so maybe i should talk about the federal federal reserve bank for a minute so it's not just one bank, right? It's it's uh, kind of an independent institution, although the governors are politically appointed. But you've got a series of banks throughout the United States, and uh, they're located in different cities, right? And not all like the big cities. There's no, uh, um, I don't think there's a Las Vegas one or whatever. But <laughs> no, you got New York, and you got uh, like Cincinnati is one, and and Philadelphia, I think. Uh, but St. Louis, I like uh, their website. So you got a ton of great information. So, and they just put it out there, right? It's not politically motivated. So the one that I'm uh, looking at right now is a federal government, and this is all U.S., but U.S. affects Canada. Interest payments. So you kind of, you know, it starts off in 1947, I think, when they were really running some big deficits. Um, we talked about that previously, wartime payments and how inflation helped to tame uh, a lot of the, the U.S. debt, right? And you can see for a long time, for 20 years or so, it's a pretty very gradual curve up, right? 1971, we're off the gold standard. It increases a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's it's up and down a little bit. The gradual trend is up till you get to uh, 2021. 20, so or yeah, the first quarter of 2022, you're at six hundred and three billion dollars. So this is just interest payments on the debt. So this is not yeah. paying down the U.S. national debt. This is just interest payments to cover, like it, you know, it's like making the minimum payments on your credit card. Yeah. Right. So they went from six hundred three billion Q one, so quarter one of twenty twenty two, to um, Q two of twenty twenty three, so a year and a quarter later, it's at nine hundred and sixty nine billion dollars, so almost a trillion. <laughs> um, that is just uh, <laughs> to make the interest payments on the debt. Yeah. Now that has to do a lot with the current interest rates uh, having gone up. Yeah, because there's two factors underlying this, right? So this graph, if you're not looking at it, um, we, so we have the debt, yeah. right? So there's a, there's a total amount of debt out there, outstanding. And then there's the cost of that debt, which is the interest rate, uh, which is impacted by the interest rate. So if interest rates are low and the debt's high, you might have a similar payment as when the debt is low and the interest rate's high, right? So yeah. um, generally, as we just talked about with the, the debt clock, like the debt has been going up significantly. Yeah. Um, and it, it seems to be growing at a faster and faster pace. But then just in, in the recent year, um, when they decided to raise interest rates, um, now all of a sudden the cost of borrowing <laughs> that money has skyrocketed. So not only is the debt as high as it's ever been, uh, now the payments on it are astronomical. <laughs> if you look at this chart, it's hard to get a sense if you're not seeing it, but it basically is sitting at you know zero for all of history and then uh, until the 80s, uh, and it slowly starts to cut, creep up, and then it basically, 
I, to, from my perspective, it looks like it doubles in the last three years or two years. Yeah, it's it's starting to go straight up. Like the the cost of borrowing money, or yeah, yeah the cost of borrowing all the money that the government of the U.S. needs to function has just doubled in the last two years, basically. Yeah, and again, for a lot of people, this is just like whatever. Whatever. I mean, they've been <laughs> doing it for this long; they'll just keep on doing it, right? Um, if we look at, does it have it on the debt clock here? The uh, tax receipts. I could bring up something else with tax receipts. The the issue is, um, so in yeah, let's pull this guy up. Yeah, because how are they going to pay for that debt? Never mind pay the yeah. debt off; just pay the interest. On yeah. It. So twenty twenty three, we have about four point eight trillion dollars of uh, tax receipts or total receipts of the U.S. government. All right, repeat which that. Is, so twenty twenty three. Uh, estimated tax receipts for the U.S. government will be $4.8 trillion. Um, and that has uh, that's actually dropped a little bit from 2022. And then it's projected to go up and up and up. And I don't know if I buy that because you need a lot of things to happen for tax receipts to go up. You need the economy to be good. Economy, yeah, businesses have to grow. People have to be making money and people paying have to be employed. tax. Yeah, they got yeah. Be, all that stuff, right? But point is, um, we're almost at a trillion dollars, and let's say tax receipts are five trillion, so that is a fifth of U.S. income just paying yeah. interest on the debt. So if you imagine in your personal situation, you get credit card debt, and now a fifth of your income is dedicated towards just paying the interest. Just the interest. Just the interest. Not the principal. Yeah. That means you're not paying the debt down. Yeah. And so if you're in that situation, you're probably still using more debt if you can get it just to live. Yeah. Because now you don't have enough money to buy groceries and everything else. So you have to borrow money. <laughs> and um, and like you'll see this in, again, talked about the payday loan kind yeah, of situations yeah. too, right? Where you get into the cycle where... You use one loan to pay off the next loan. Exactly. You never have enough. and you. So the difference with... You know, regular people in the government is the government can print money, and yeah. that's why the government's always like, ah, don't worry, we'll we'll take care of it, right? Yeah. But it, uh, I guess how this relates to real estate or what we're talking about at what expense? <laughs> yeah, at what expense and what like what are the effects, right? That's yeah. what I want to know. If, yeah. Should I invest in real estate? Should I not? Um, and we talked about, I think last episode, what happens when you know in this scenario or that scenario. And I'm like, either way, they got to print money. It's the only way out of the solution, right? Yeah. Because if, let's say you have these, cripple, as a regular person, if you have these crippling credit card payments, eventually you, you either, go, you, go you, you go bankrupt, Yeah. right? Or you do a debt consolidation, but either way you're defaulting on your, yeah. on your uh, covenants, on your Not loans. Not able to make the payments. Yep. And so people will say, well, that'll never happen with the government because they can create money. And yeah, I guess that's true to a certain point. But it's only based on confidence. Yeah. Right? The, uh, the ability of the government to print money and to issue more debt. And, and that's if, why you see all these political games where um, they posture in a certain way just yeah. to try and make it seem like they're doing something. Um, you know, like inflation's got away from us. We need to clamp down. And they play, like, they, they kind of put out this message, you know, we're playing a tough game on inflation. You know, that's the enemy. We are going <laughs> to conquer it. I don't know whose phone is going on. <laughs> that's mine, sorry. <laughs> and we are going to make it uh, go away. So how are we going to do that? We're going to use our tool called interest rates. We're going to raise them up, and that's going to kill inflation, and then we'll all be better off, and uh, we can move forward. And... <laughs> exactly, but you see what happens, yeah. right? Yeah. And, you know, to be fair, we're talking about the, um, the, the payments going straight up, you know, up in a straight line almost for the interest on the debt. So that could drop back down yeah. if interest rates drop. Yeah. Um, but what we're looking at now, if you look at total U.S. debt that's outstanding, there's a huge chunk that's rolling over in the next couple of yeah, years. So, so maybe I should explain that? this. <laughs> Yeah, so we've rolling had... Rolling over, Mark. I'm already... <laughs> are you rolling over? Yeah. Your eyes are rolling over in the back of your head. So, yeah, we've had a few people um, reach out to us and say, like, hey, I love your stuff. Some of it kind of goes over my head. Yeah. And, um, 
yeah, because we're immersed in the world of real estate and, and all this stuff, we take some of these things for granted. So, you know, if you're, if you're out there and we're, we're talking about it doesn't make a lot of sense to you, reach out and let us know. I mean, first, just Google it. If that doesn't help, then reach out and uh, we'll clarify. Um, but what, so the main way that the U.S. and most governments finance their, you know, their debt programs, if you want to call it that, but, you know, get money is they will issue debt. And they'll do that in denominations of, uh, or not denominations, but in different time series. So if you think about like buying a GIC, you can buy a one year, a three year, a five year, a 10 year. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing, right? The government will issue a one year T bill, if we're talking about the state's treasury bill, or a three year, a five year, a 10 year, maybe a 30 year in some uh, yeah. cases, right? And they'll, you know, they have a plan for how long they need certain money and uh, different programs that they're paying for, and then that determines how they issue that debt. So there's a whole series of debt out there. Most of it tends to be short term. Some of it is longer term. So you're talking ten years or whatever. Um, and then well, when you so like the government's like, hey, I need some money. Uh, I'm going to issue a bond. Yeah. And that bond is it's going to pay an interest rate. Yep. And essentially what the person is buying is a security that the government is going to pay this money back plus interest in the future. Yes. That's essentially all it is. And right? it's backed, you know, they, they have the saying it's backed by the full, I can't remember now, the full, um, full might and authority or something of, or full of Biden. Yeah. The, well, it's it. Yeah. Biden said it, but it's not, <laughs> um, it's not just him, but basically like you've got the U S government as your guarantor, yeah. they're going to pay it. It's like yeah. ironclad guaranteed. Yeah. No chance. They won't. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's because they have the ability to increase taxes to do whatever. Right. So, and you know, fair enough. It has been the most stable investment. Yeah. But um, the, the idea is that here is this thing, which is basically a promise. Yep. Right that the government's going to pay this back in the future with interest. Yes. Uh, and you give your money for that. Yep. And maybe it's not an individual giving money. Maybe it's an institution or uh, a bank or a foreign government or some other thing is yep. buying these bonds. Yep. And they have faith, like you said, in uh, the ability of the U.S. government to pay them back. Yes. <sighs> <laughs> and yeah, it, I see where the problem is here because <laughs> the government says, Ooh, now I got some money, but I owe it back in the future with interest. Yeah. But next time I have to pay that interest, I'm just going to issue more bonds. Well, I mean, the idea behind it is, is sort of uh, simple, like, um, because municipal governments will do bonds as well. Right. Uh, provincial, and so the idea is, you know, if you need to build a bridge or do some kind of economic activity yeah. or something that will spur economic activity, you can afford to do it because maybe it costs you a billion dollars to to build a bridge, but it's going to link these two cities or these two yeah. areas and that's going to increase your tax revenue yeah. so that by the time it's time to pay it off, you've made all that tax revenue back plus some. Yeah. And you can pay the original amount back plus tax. Yeah. That's the plus idea. Plus interest, yeah. Yeah, pl sorry, plus interest. That's the idea. That's rarely how it works now. And we've seen that, like, they don't pay it off because the debt <sighs> just keeps increasing. So yeah. if it's, let's say, a one-year T-bill, yeah. um, it has a rollover date. And that rollover date is one year. So the rollover assumes that the government is not just going to pay that debt back and be done with it, plus interest. Right? They don't have enough money to pay all the debt off. So what they're going to do is they're going to pay that bill back with the interest, with the coupon, we call it. Um, but they're immediately going to issue another one-year uh, T-bill. Right? So that... Yeah. And if you can be smart enough about it, you don't actually have to have the money, right? You do an auction for the new ones, people buy them, you pay the old ones, and you can keep rolling it over. The only thing that is um so that's, sort of outstanding yeah. is that interest so that's rolling it over yeah so and that's an important when concept the, because when the it's debts not, expire yeah like when the when um the time frame like if you get a one year or a 10 year yeah when that that time frame is expired um it's time to redeem it then yeah 
um, that's rolling it over. No. So no. The, the payoff is, so let's say you, Brent, bought a one-year T-bill from the government. Uh, you get it back in a year, and you get your minuscule amount of interest as well. Yeah. Um, that's done. That's paid off. But the government doesn't have the money to actually pay it off. So they... Right? So they're going to issue a new one-year one to somebody else, and or maybe it's you. That's called rollover. And that's rolling it over. Right? So that's... It's... Yeah, with the concept of rollover, it's just the implicit understanding that there's not enough money to pay off the debt. Yeah. Otherwise, they would just pay it off and be done. It wouldn't yeah. be a rollover. Yeah. You wouldn't put it back in. Just extinguish it. Yeah. So you're done. done, done, paid for. Exactly. So, um, and when we talk about the rollovers, in the next couple of years, there's a huge amount of U.S. debt that is rolling over. So one year, three year, five year. Well, it's coming uh, to its expiry date. Yeah. And so it should be paid off. Yep. But they're not able be. to pay it off. Yeah. So normally, you know, in normal course of events, it would be, you know, interest rate would be, let's say it's 2%. And you're going to have a premium over the overnight Fed rate, right? Which is sort of the, the in, you know, the interest rate, air quotes. Yeah. What the um, official interest rate in the States is. That's the Fed overnight lending rate. Um and then there's a premium on that for shorter investments. So if you do a longer investment, you're going to get less interest because it's more stable and more safe. Yeah. If you're doing a, a shorter one that's deemed to be a little bit riskier in the world of bonds and bond trading, yeah. so you get a higher uh, interest rate back, right? So you would get more money for a shorter duration investment than a... Am I getting that right? Mm. No, I got that backwards. You get less money. Yeah, sorry. You get yeah. I'm, I'm backwards. You get less money on the shorter ones and more on the longer ones because there's a little more risk for a longer term investment, yeah. right? That something could happen, something could change. Um, so, if interest rates stay the same, you just roll it over at the same rate. That's fine. But the problem now is interest rates have gone up considerably. So there's yeah. a ton of low price U.S. debt that is now going to you know they're going to roll it over, but they have to offer it at a higher interest rate. So that means we've seen this sort of straight up. Uh, and in some cases, graph. it could be a, basically double. Could be double, could be triple. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so for the same amount of money, uh, you're paying triple the interest. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at this increase from, um, you know, 400 and something uh, billion, or sorry, Q1 2022 was. Uh, 603 billion gone up to 969 billion right now. You know, that's just going to accelerate and keep going straight up for a little while until As interest rates happen. drop down. Unless they drop interest rates tomorrow before the rollovers happen. Yeah. Which I, I don't see happening. You know, and the U.S. hasn't increased interest rates as much as Canada. But, um, yeah. Well, uh, the other still, interesting thing historically, is, um, so who buys this debt, right? And like individuals can buy it. We talk about foreign governments, uh, even state governments. But the Federal Reserve can buy this as well. So that's <laughs> yeah. another layer of complex complexity because yeah. the central bank, basically, of the U.S. can buy the U.S. government's debt. Yes. Yeah, that's complex. Yeah, a little, and and they do <laughs> right when. So what happens with debt is it gets auctioned off, right? Every day there's an auction and they're going to auction off uh, various debt. That's how you actually do it, right? And um, if nobody buys, which has happened, if there's no interest in it, yeah. then the, the Fed basically has to buy it. They don't have to, but they will. Yeah. And that's why the U.S. Fed holds so much uh, U.S. debt. Yeah. So, you know, people say, well, it's all a shell game. They can just, like, extinguish that or whatever, but they can't, right? Yeah. There has to be confidence in U.S. Treasury bills. Otherwise, nobody nobody's going to will buy. ever buy them. Yeah. So if they were to just, like, erase <laughs> that debt, then everybody would be like, whoa, hold on. This something's afoot here. Like, this isn't, this isn't good. I'm not buying that yeah. U.S. debt anymore, and we're we're seeing some of that. Like China has dumped a whole bunch of U.S. debt. To uh, I mean, they, they've got some issues as well, right? They're just trying to prop up their currency, but um, there is a move away from U.S. debt, which has been sort of the the Standard. reserve currency yeah. of the world. 
and yeah, it doesn't bode well for the U.S. Anyways, if if that happens, there's there's lots of other sort of geo geopolitical stuff at force, but um, or in play, forces in play. But uh, I don't know. I just we, we we were looking at this and we thought, oh man, we got a <laughs> prompted by the the mention in the book, like what is going on. So I guess, you know, what does that mean for real estate investors? Or what does that mean for people just trying to save money? Yeah, that's a bigger question because um, if you're at a point where you're investing in real estate, that assumes you've already got something to invest. You've saved up some money. Yeah. And uh, you're in a position that, you know, hey, I can qualify for a loan. I want to buy a house. Um, But if you're uh, just, you know, working a job, trying to save money, maybe you haven't got into the real estate market yet. Um, looking at this, what does that actually mean to you that you have debt? Ooh, our cameras. Just got, uh, Don't worry, we got the St. Louis Fed up there. To yeah, St. Louis Fed to... Uh, save us. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I got to click yours again. Yeah. <clears throat> I forget. Yeah. Well, what does it mean for young people? What does it mean? I don't know for anybody really. Right. Yeah. In this, what, like, what do you do? And, uh, I mean, our, our thesis is have hard assets. So, you know, we're looking at all these, these numbers and debt rollover and debt payments, interest payments, right? Is it sustainable is the first one, right? People always assume like the system has worked for this way forever. Yeah. But when you look at some of these things, when numbers start to go straight up, that's never usually not good. And that means we could come to a head at some point. There is the possibility of default, which nobody thinks is possible, but it's happened in history many times. Yeah. Many times. Yeah, that's the historical norm, right? Going back in history is when debt gets too big, it eventually defaults and the whole thing collapses and resets something else, right? Yeah. Some other monetary standard. But that just, yeah, it goes back to what we talked about in a different episode about monetary, um, what was it? We talked about money, right? What is money? And that is the question that jumps out. What? I think we've talked about money once or twice. (laughs) Um, but that is the question that pops in your head, right? Well, if this is happening, why? And, uh, what is like, what is this stuff? Like the U S dollar? Like I thought it was pretty secure. I thought it was going to last, you know, it's backed by the government. Uh Okay. And you're saying it's backed by confidence. Um, what is it backed by? Well, the reality is it's not backed by anything, right? (laughs) No. (laughs) And we talked about that, but it's fiat. So it's, it's just government decree it's this is why we have money is because i said so (laughs) yeah yeah and we're coming to a point where it's going to start to hurt a little bit right we ignore this stuff at our peril and we've looked at just interest payments are going to take up a fifth of u.s spending so all the money they get in a fifth of that goes just to pay interest and it's going to likely over the next couple years really increase yeah. And uh, when you, know, you could say that's half? the government's problem, that's the government's problem, right? But it's ultimately it we are the people paying <laughs> the. Well, our, when our the kids. government can't afford to fund Social Security and, and pensions, other s- and pensions, and all military this. spending for yeah. the defense, then it's our problem, right? Yeah. Then, and yeah, our depending healthcare. on where you're at, people have seen a deterioration in Canada too. Yeah. In healthcare spending and, and certain things, right? Just things in the are services, not better. right? Yeah. Government services. That affects our lives. Yeah. So directly. You know, yeah. And if you're wealthy, I guess you can get private health care. There's a lot of things that you can do to kind of insulate yourself from that. For the vast majority of yeah. people though, um, they can't. Right. This is why we pay taxes. So we have all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, it may be getting to the point where we can't do that. And the numbers for Canada are similar. Yeah. Right. You look yeah, at we the um, we track in line with them. Well, or or worse. Right. We can. Uh, <laughs> well, let's just real quick. Let's go back to the debt clock. We got world debt clocks that we can um, that we can bring up. So here's the U.S. And we've talked about this before, debt to GDP, right? So their public debt is similar to their external debt. So the difference would be like who holds the debt, who holds those bills, right? Is it internally held, which for most 
uh, first world nations it's internally held, especially with, you talked about the Federal Reserve buying a lot of this stuff, right? Yeah. External would be, you know, people like China buying U.S. Um, T-bills, for example. So anyways, yeah, it's cool, interesting to look at. But we go to Canada over here. Whoops. And um, our public debt to GDP is similar to our external debt to GDP at around 130%. Once you're over 100%, that's usually a sign that something is uh, is wrong, right? The things are not sustainable. Um, and, you know, you'll see other countries like here's Greece, right, 229, and they've had a number of defaults uh, recently. Uh, Portugal, so you got, what is yeah, it? Yeah, 229. Portugal, Italy, Greece, and Spain. Yeah, 229. You know, Portugal, 145. Uh, Spain, 135. Where's Italy? Yeah, debt, G debt to GDP ratio, right? So yeah. over 100% means that your debt. Uh, here's Italy, 173% or 144% eternal. So those are countries that have all had default issues. Yeah, in the, you know, in the last twenty years. So we're talk like we're talking in hyperinflation, yeah. devaluation. Is this what's going to happen in Canada? It's possible, right? If it could happen yeah. there, why not here? Yeah, we think we're different, but I don't know. Are we? Um. <laughs> anyways, uh, you know, again, back to the question: like, what does it all mean? Um. You know, that's hard to say, but probably don't trust dollars. Yeah, don't, trust don't, the financial don't system. save your money in cash um, exclusively, right? Yeah. Obviously, you got to have some cash lying yep. around for what you need it for. But if you're just hoarding all your wealth in cash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be in for a tough time. Um, and we've talked about this, you know, what's the way out for now? It's printing more money. Yeah. To prop up the system, what happens when you print more money? Assets generally go up in value. Yeah. And the prime example of that is real estate. So yeah. are we headed for a crash? Some people have been saying that for 40 years. Yeah. Um, like, I don't think so. There's volatility yeah. for sure. And we've seen that in the short term. But over the long term, where is the money going to go? You need to put it somewhere. And, yeah. you know, typically wealthy folks understand that. They're not going to buy GICs. Um, they got to put their money somewhere. So that's going to go into a business in Canada. We don't see a lot of, you know, research and development or business <laughs> development. Uh, it goes into real estate. Yeah. So where are you going to put your money? Um, hard assets, right? Real estate. And when Bitcoin. you say hard assets, like you mean scarce, something that cannot be easily produced quickly, yeah. right? Yes. Um, like the dollars can. So if we ca come into a time of crisis, like yep. it, everything's pointing to, hey, uh, the debt is out of control. The interest costs on the debt have just skyrocketed. Our tax revenues are likely slowing and um, going to be, you know, suppressed for the time being because uh, we have an economic downturn. Um, so if you have all these factors coming in and your solution is to print money while well, when it comes to a head, when there is a crisis, all of a sudden the government flicks the switch and they print money and it happens just like that. And we saw that with COVID, right? When, uh, yeah. um, when all of a sudden there was a great need and, or perceived need anyways, to print money, to, to help in various ways or bolster our healthcare or whatever the case, right? They just flicked the switch and there it was, right? Yeah. And now we're dealing with the consequences of that. But who's to say if, a crisis or another crisis happens or some other uh, really difficult time uh, pops up now all of a sudden they flick the switch again and here we go right we're on for another ride so while it may seem like you know you're kind of stable like it can happen quickly and then all of a sudden the dollars are devalued again right and they're not yeah. that's the point they're not scarce they're not they're very easy to produce at the will or whim of uh, the authorities who produce them yeah so, and that's the difficult, like the difference when you're talking about hard assets is something that is alternative to money that you can own that maintains its value and that you can't just flick a switch and make well, a whack of houses. <laughs> yeah. And preferably the government doesn't have any control over. Yeah. I, right? They I do didn't. have some, you know, they have an effect certainly on real estate with through regulation, but, um, yeah. 
It's a lot yeah. more limited than their um, ability to just flick a switch and print dollars, right? Exactly. And especially when you look at CBDCs, right? Central bank digital currencies, which is where we're headed. Yeah. No, like, no doubt about it. We're moving that way. And um, they've talked about, uh, I, I was, I think it was the head of the Bank of International Settlements, BIS, which is the central bank of central banks. I think it's, what's his name? Augustin Carson. Um was talking about just the ability, or it wasn't him, but it was somebody else at a recent conference, the ability of the government through central bank digital currencies to direct spending, right? And talked about as, as if this is a good thing, that if we don't like how citizens are spending their money, we won't allow them to spend uh, it on certain things. Yeah. So, you know, pick your poison, right? Like, is that is that carbon-related? Yeah. That's sort of the new... Uh, environmental movement and yeah that's the new religion now right and it could be something in 10 or 20 years something else but right now yeah. it's all about reducing carbon emissions so if you you know you're spending too much money on gas well any of you the sent the digital currency we're not going to allow you to spend that on it on gas anymore yeah mm -hmm. or it might come at a premium or something yeah exactly there's all kinds of things and like governments love this right yeah more control yeah so that's you know that's one possibility right we talked about um, money printing, we've talked about defaults, which happen quickly. You don't see it coming and then it happens. Yeah. Your currency is devalued overnight, right? Uh, Egypt, yeah. that's that's one that's been in the news recently, devaluing. Um, trying to think, Nigeria's got some stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, and we think, and you said we think Canada is insulated from that, but yeah, in many ways, Canada is, like, we're nothing compared to the U.S., right? No. The U.S. currency is like the, I don't say the gold standard because it's not a gold standard. <laughs> it's the U.S. standard. It's but, the petrodollar standard. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like the U.S. and then Canada and then the rest of the world. No. You know? No, we're just like, we're standing next to them. So we're kind of like, you know, we're hey, insulated a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. big brother. Um, so one answer I think that uh, people will pull up is like, well, we'll just increase immigration. Right in a yeah. Canadian context, yeah. that's something that we've done massive. We've talked about this to death. Let me just bring up a quick um, chart here. So this is real GDP per capita. So if you're not uh, watching, you're just listening. Um, yeah, the chart is uh, real GDP, so real gross domestic product per capita. So this is a good measure. Well, good. It's a better measure than straight GDP, right? When you're looking at gross domestic, gross domestic product and comparing it, you want to see per capita, like per person in Canada, yeah. what's it like? And so we've seen July 21, it was at just over 4%. And like This you know, is July of 2021. Yeah. Sorry, July of 2021. And now we're almost at July uh, 2023. And we've dipped into negative territory. Yeah. Like... So I the, thought immigration was supposed to solve our problems so the because economic um, livelihood of the country, like the GDP, our efficiency, yeah, is really. is negative per person. Correct. Right now. Right now. Um, which is that that means that the people, like every person in Canada, is consuming more than they produce. Essentially, yeah, they should be producing more than they consume, yeah. right, for a healthy economy. And um, so that's not very healthy. <laughs> no, it's not happening. Right. And that was, you know, immigration they, was supposed to fix a lot of our issues and into the future. Well, because the idea is you bring in an immigrant yeah. and they're going to like add to the economy. Right. Yep. So if we can bring in immigrants who are working, who have good jobs, yep. uh, then they'll contribute to the economy and the economy will grow and that per capita thing will go up. Yeah, that's the theory, but people have done studies where just, you know, adding a whole bunch of immigrants doesn't actually do anything for yeah. an economy. It yeah. may increase overall GDP, and we've seen that. Like, the, the federal liberal government has been talking about how GDP is up. Like, yeah, you've added... A million people. A million people a year. We're on that pace, right? Like, yeah, of course it's going to be up. It better be A up. little bit. <laughs> but what, we've, what actually is happening is overall it's going down. So in terms of, Earth like, capital. standard of life yeah. or any measure, um, yeah. our efficiency has actually dropped. Yeah. And that's not surprising when you import 
Like we're, we're not getting all immigrants, uh, like all economic immigrants who have degrees and immediately get to work, start businesses. Yeah, uh, they will have dependents, they'll have parents, they'll exactly. have kids, they'll need health care, they'll need education, they need yeah. our services. Right, which yeah. is fine, that's yeah. fine, but don't tell me this is going to solve our economic problems. Yeah. And especially when we're importing students by the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, who are not working. Yeah, who, I mean, yeah, or some of them working. might be, or they're working part-time, um, and they're not, it's not uh, contributing to the economy, right? Not everything has to be about economic dollars growth. and contributing, yeah, c- contributing to the economy. There's there's room for immigration on compassionate grounds and so forth, but, you know, with the there's a limit and people will often, I've seen this in sort of the debate, right? Especially on Twitter where you actually have like, you'll have economists and people from the government or their proxies. So like serious folks talking about this. And like, if you say anything about immigration, people get defensive and they're like, well, shutting off immigration is no answer. And it's like nobody. And I've seen that actual quote, right? Nobody's yeah. saying stop immigration. Yeah. We're saying, let's just talk about it and think about it and do it in a reasonable way that yeah. works for everyone. Right. And not everything is like polarized and black and white. Yeah. So it's, it's hard to say anything about immigration. Well, Cause there's more trade-offs more people with are. everything, right? There's trade-offs. Yeah. So if you bring in more people, you're going to have a tighter housing supply. You're going to have constraints on your healthcare and education. And I think healthcare is, a lot of people talk about that, right? Like wait yeah. times and yeah. staff, like nurses and doctors who are just overworked and underpaid and right. And then, yeah, if you don't have that conversation about the trade-offs that if I'm going to bring in a million more people next year, well, I don't build any more hospitals. I don't, right? And then is yeah. it wise? Like, should you take your money and invest it in other things for the people that are already here and maybe tone it down to 200,000 people or 400,000, right? Like, yeah. So. Yeah, it's all because there's this, I don't want to say insane, but kind of a ridiculous goal that we have adopted. We, as in. We, Mark yeah. Mark and I have adopted. <laughs> no, Canada. <laughs> Canada, right? Of 100 million people in Canada, 100 million population by 2100. Um, that's the century initiative. And, yeah. um, like when you see round numbers like that, that's not, it's not like they said, we, you know, we've done scientific research and we aim to have 97.325 million people by 2094. Yeah. Right. I always trust odd numbers more than round numbers. Yeah. Right. This is clearly just, it's ideological or it's a political goal. Yeah. Um, yeah, they have it here. The, our goals, we are working towards a bigger, bolder Canada. It's a centuryinitiative.ca. Yeah. A hundred million people by 2100. And last time we said we're at 40 million now. Yeah. So yeah, and we did the gonna... math. It was, you know, if we're in 60 uh, or in... 60 this, years. Two, nah, not 60 years, uh, 77 years, whatever. is over a million people per year. So on the pace that yeah. we're at. So basically, it's not going to... Sl- like, if this goal is a thing and they yeah. want to hit it, we yeah. got to do what we did this year, every year, yeah, until 2100. And, you know, for those who are more conspiratorial-minded, right? This <laughs> it, Well, it also falls in line with some of the goals in the World Economic Forum yeah. of increased immigration and then, you know, other people but where, will my say... My question is, where are these people yeah. going to come from? Like, are there that 100 million people? Like, Yeah, have you looked at the population estimates for Africa? It's crazy. For Nigeria alone, right? And they got to get out of the country or what? Like, Well, they, they don't have infrastructure there. So they're going to come to places that also don't have infrastructure. <laughs> well, as we were just saying, <laughs> we you English. said it was uh, so many people have to go to Edmonton and Calgary. and Yeah. Uh, it's like, yeah, well, hey, if you're going to try and pack in you know, hundreds of millions of people in <laughs> Edmonton, then... It's almost like a punishment. <laughs> yeah, if you're looking this stuff up, they <laughs> Sorry have, for our listeners in Edmonton. They have <laughs> maps, right? So the map by 2100, if we do follow this goal, we are expected to have 33 and a half million people in Toronto in the GTA. 33 and, and a half, yeah. Yeah. So. And I, and right versus about 8 million right now, so just about triple. But then you look at places like Edmonton, Calgary, I think it was Five 15 times. and a half million versus 3 million now, so 5 times the amount of people there. Yeah. There's a lot of igloos. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> um, uh, but anyways. Frostbite the, centers. Uh, <laughs> that's right. 
<laughs> Maybe we should start investing in those. Um, so I don't know. I guess my point is like, you know, increased massive immigration. I don't think that's the answer to our problems. Right. But it's, it's a distraction and, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, we've seen in the short term anyways, it doesn't help GDP. Yeah. So it's not going to help us pay off that debt. Yeah. But what it's going to do is increase housing pressure for sure. Yeah. Now, the next government, um, you know, liberals aren't doing too well in the polls. So if there's a change of government um, or, you know, another minority government, you know, are we going to continue with at this pace? I don't know if we will. I doubt it. But, um, you know, if we do, it's certainly increased housing pressure, increased housing prices. Yeah. Um, money printing, same thing, is going to increase the value of assets like real estate. Um, yeah, and it puts yeah. the government in a pickle for downward pressure on interest rates, right? Yeah. Um, like they only have a couple levers available, and you said you want they want more control, so they'd be interested in having control over like the what you're spending your money on through a CBDC, yeah. right? And having control over every little thing, but... Um, yeah, interest rates, immigration, <laughs> right? Like they can move these big levers and they can print money. So it's like, you know, you raise interest rates to make it chill out and then you, you know, pull that back and print some money and right. Yeah. Yeah. What are they doing back there? Yeah. I mean, their mandate is, uh, interest rate and, uh, employment. Yeah. Cent central banks, right? That's what they're. And our mandate is to sit to... here and talk about it and yes. react to it. And hopefully people can learn and, uh figure yeah. this out and act wisely in light of all this stuff. So there is one more thing that, uh, this isn't a mini, uh, yeah, episode this is anymore. like a full on. <laughs> That's what happens. Mark ramble. Let me talk. <laughs> no, one other thing that people have brought up, which is kind of a wild card. Yeah. Is AI. Ooh. Right. What is yeah. going to happen to productivity with AI? And I think you and you and I have sat through some presentations, certainly about, what AI is doing now and what it could do, right? We've seen, um, I don't know, I, I did some work Does everybody know what AI is? Artificial intelligence, sorry. Yeah. Not, uh, not how they make... If you uh, haven't heard of it, it's coming farms. for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming for your job. <laughs> well, it is. So I still do a little bit of audiovisual work right, yeah. in the commercial field. And I did uh, some work at an automotive plant um, a while ago anyways. Yeah. But like walking through, somebody made the point that like, this is the most people you will ever see in this plant ever. Yeah. Right. And they're building new plants with, less with people. minimum, minimal amounts of people, like very few people. Yeah. Right. To the point where they don't like, they'll put lighting in, but they don't need to have the lighting on. Yeah. HVAC. Right. Yeah. They don't need all these systems for HVAC yeah. because as long as the temperature robots. is comfortable enough for the well, materials for machinery. and machinery that exactly. you're working with. Right. So a whole paradigm shift. Yeah. And if you look at the cost. Well, yeah. Do you need uh, yeah ventilation? You need do you need breaks. the ceiling height? Do you need the exactly. accessibility for human beings? Do you need the safety? Yeah. Like you need to, you'll have some specially trained folks for maintenance and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right when the robots sign a down. waiver and go in that building and fix <laughs> <Yeah>. the robot. <laughs> it's like, you know, here's a flashlight and uh, 45, get in the tunnel. Yeah, sorry, it's a Vietnam okay. movie reference. Yeah, see, so, yeah, um, <laughs> I just assume but, it's before my time. Um, but yeah, when you look at like the automotive industry, it's true, right? And I like walking through, you're looking at like all this stuff could be done by robots. What these people are doing, yeah, there's no reason, yeah. and at like, let's be honest, much more productively. Yeah. Um, and Around that ties clock. into AI and their, you know, a robot's ability to figure out more complex, more and more complex um, problems. But so there is a possibility. And, you know, people have this vision of the future where humans don't work anymore because robots are doing everything, right? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't see that at all. And what I do see is some of the more complex stuff, um, like trades specifically, not, you know, if you're work, if you make your living on a laptop, yeah, um, you should probably be worried. Yeah, I think <laughs> this is right? this is another episode right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, but we're just talking about you know, we're like, what do you do with your money? What do you do with your life? Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, How are all these forces our... going to impact you? Yeah, and we we always kind of come back to real estate. Um, but it's yeah, what savior, happens with the debt and everything else? Option. 
Yeah, no, we only have one savior, and that's, that's right. not real estate. But um, you know, when we're trying to figure out what to do with our lives here on Earth, right? Uh, but yeah, AI—that's it is a wild card, and what's going to happen? But I don't. It's not. I don't think it's going to be as good as everybody thinks. Yeah. Right. Because if there's, you know, worst case, there's mass uh, unemployment. Right. The, you know, does the government get increased enough tax revenues to pay for everybody to sit around and do nothing? I don't know. No. But we know we need housing as as one example. So we're going to need plumbers. We're going to need framers. We're going to need HVAC guys. We're going to need uh, yeah. sorry, HVAC. Some people get really yeah. upset when you say yeah. HVAC. I don't know why. Like, guys, That's not me. It's an abbreviation. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but you need all, you know, all these skilled trades to yeah. do stuff, right? Unless you're doing cookie cutter houses, yeah, which is can, a possibility. Yeah, we can no. get robots. I've seen that some of the 3D printed yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's not a thing. No. Um, I used to and, work at a 3D printing company. That's not a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now the printer's jammed again. Yeah, that house is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it out. Uh, yeah. It's a house. We can't. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> but uh anyway suffice i mean yeah there's a lot to unpack like you said but ai uh is kind of a wild card in the way that it's changing a lot of industries and um could change things further so yeah. i guess you need to stay on top of that uh yeah. that kind of we stuff will and keep have you informed. a useful skill next episode we will keep you informed about ai um a different different episode we will talk about ai next okay. time we're going to talk about that the book informed. that we were going to talk about <laughs> right <laughs> we're, it's the pre prelude yeah prelude, prelude to, to the book <laughs> uh all right folks we're going to cut it there and uh hopefully you found this very right, helpful i want to keep talking oh, hey well you can do another episode oh, okay yeah. uh, before your eyes roll over and the u.s debt rolls over <laughs> get yourself some real estate hey <laughs> And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Two Stewards Show. If you like my voice better, click subscribe. And if you like my voice better, click share. If you like both, give us a five-star rating. To interact with the show, feel free to reach out at hello at twostewards.ca. We'll see you in the next episode. In the meantime, steward your wealth wisely.